All right, so good morning to you all. Um, we're going to switch gears yet again and start working in AutoCAD. And it always seems like the, uh, the further into the semester we get, the faster we seem to go through programs. But that's the nature of, of things. Um, obviously, we have a lot to cover. Previously in this class, we used to spend a little bit of time in Vectorworks. I will, I will admit that it is not my favorite program, and I was quite happy when I convinced the powers that be that, that AutoCAD was a better choice uh, for you guys to have a little exposure to. Um, in terms of AutoCAD, I, I think it's important to, to make a few notes about AutoCAD before we get started. How many people have worked in AutoCAD before? A few of you? OK. If you've worked in AutoCAD before, this will be relatively easy section for you. Um, for those of you that have never touched AutoCAD, never opened AutoCAD, this will be challenging. Um, AutoCAD is the kind of program that's very complex. It has a lot of intricacies to it. And it takes time to really get comfortable in it. And that's to be expected. Um, AutoCAD is, however, kind of the gold standard of what architectural design firms tend to use. In recent years, uh, Autodesk, the company that makes AutoCAD, also released a program called Revit, which you've probably heard about as well. Um, the, the larger architectural firms out there tend to use Revit. Um, Revit is very good for large-scale building projects. You're, you're working on a skyscraper, the chances are it's going to be in Revit. Um, when you get to the smaller scale, if you get to a local firm that's doing housing or, or something like that, more likely they're just going to be working in plain old AutoCAD, uh, probably not even in 3D, just 2D AutoCAD. Um, certainly, if you, if you work with an engineer, um, especially the engineers that tend to be solo practitioners, et cetera, they're going to be working primarily in AutoCAD. So it is, it is definitely the standard um, application that, that's really used in practice. Uh, being proficient in AutoCAD is probably one of the most critical skills that you have. Unfortunately, I think, yes, for example, we offer a, an AutoCAD series that you can take here. Um, taking introductory AutoCAD, if you've never touched AutoCAD, is probably not a bad idea, um, just to get your feet wet. However, AutoCAD courses always tend to be a little bit more um, try to cover everything, and they don't you know, get really specific about these are the things you need to know in an architecture firm, uh, these are the things that you need to know to really get by in architecture. I'm going to try, over the course of a couple weeks, to teach you the things that I think you really need to know. Uh, and I'm going to concentrate on those. Unfortunately, there's a lot of AutoCAD that just is never covered. Um, for example, if you're doing a construction drawing set using the Sheet Set Manager and how you, how you integrate lots and lots of files to, to create a sheet set is an incredibly good skill if you were going to work in an office. But nobody really teaches you how to do that. And it's too bad, but it's beyond the scope of certainly of this class uh, and beyond the scope of a lot of the AutoCAD classes that are offered uh, in general, wherever you take them. So if you've never worked in AutoCAD, though, it would be worth your while to take an AutoCAD class just because it is so common in the world of architecture. So if you're, if you're pursuing it, I would recommend taking it. Um, and obviously here, it's a, it's a cheap option because you don't have to pay too much for the units along the way. The other thing that I will say is the, the, there is a very nice parallel between AutoCAD and Rhino. So if you've used Rhino at all, or if you've taken 136, or you're t currently taking 136, AutoCAD is pretty easy because a lot of the stuff overlaps. And likewise, if you've, taken, if you've done any AutoCAD work, when you get into 136 in Rhino, uh, Rhino will be easier. So the two work very similar to each other, and that's a good thing. Uh, if you were to never take an AutoCAD class and you just took the Rhino series, um, and became really efficient in Rhino, you could probably pick up enough AutoCAD to be fine. So uh, it kind of works both ways. And I like to at least talk about that. Not that I'm trying to boost my own class a little bit. But you should all take 136 anyway. So we'll get to that. I'll try to sell you on that a little bit later on. OK, so with any of these programs, I like to always start with kind of an introduction of the program itself. Uh, I had a slight licensing issue when I went to open AutoCAD today. And you may or may not have that issue. I have no idea. We'll see uh, as you try to open it. There are two versions of AutoCAD. Actually, there's three versions of AutoCAD that are available on this computer. There is AutoCAD 2016. There is AutoCAD 2017. And there's also the AutoCAD architectural desktop. We're going to stay away from the architectural desktop for right now. 
Um, it overlays some more architectural stuff on top of it. And while it seems obvious, it's not as prolific in terms of access. So I'd rather teach you plain old AutoCAD. I went ahead and opened AutoCAD 2017. Whether you use 2017 or 2016, it really doesn't matter. AutoCAD has a history of developing uh, and producing new versions every year. Uh, and if you go back in time to AutoCAD 2000 or 2004 or 2008 or any of those editions, those are kind of major milestone changes that they've done to the, the uh, AutoCAD operating system. Furthermore, if you go to AutoCAD 2010 or older, there's going to be significant differences in what it looks like. As long as you're using something that's, I'd say, 2013 or newer, it's going to be almost identical no matter what version you use. So if you have a version on your computer at home or on your laptop and you're using you know, 2014 or something, it's going to essentially look the same as what we're using here at 2017. Since we have 2017, it's the newest version. We might as well use the newest version. Uh, and that's, that's what I opened for what we're doing today. So when I first open AutoCAD and we start to look at AutoCAD in general, uh, we have a few things going on. Before I go into it too much, though, we're going to create a brand new document because that unlocks a lot of the tools that are currently locked because I have no document open. So in the very upper left corner, you see the A. Next to it is kind of a blank white piece of paper looking icon. If you click on that, you will be presented with a select template view. This little dialog box for select template has a bunch of templates that people use to start up their drawings that have a lot of settings already, already created for them. We're going to use the basic ACAD, the basic AutoCAD template, nothing fancy. I'm trying to start you off at a very base level. So we'll go ACAD, and if you double click on it, it will go ahead and it will open up the AutoCAD workspace. So now that the AutoCAD workspace is opened up, I'm going to go ahead and walk through kind of what's going on in the world of AutoCAD. So up here at the top, um, there are a few little shortcuts. One is obviously the new file, which we, which we clicked on already. We can open an existing file. We can save. We can save as, and we can plot. Printing in AutoCAD is called plotting, just the way that they do it. Uh, generally, plotting refers to wide format, like a plotter, big printer. But if you were going to print to a laser printer or something like that, they don't change it. It's still called plotting. So it's just an AutoCAD thing. So the one other thing that I will point out is over here at the end, there's a little downward facing triangle. This allows you to turn on or turn off other menu items should you want to. Um, I mentioned briefly the sheet set manager, not something you're going to learn about, but that's where you would be able to open it up. The one thing that I will point out, though, is something called workspace. And by default, workspace is probably not showing for you. But if you check workspace, you'll get this little drop-down menu. And this works a lot like Adobe in that there's pre-designed workspaces. Remember, we switched from typography to essentials or whatever in the world of Photoshop, InDesign, and or Illustrator. This works the same way in AutoCAD. We're working, hopefully, in the drafting and annotation view. If something were to get messed up with your toolbars or you were to accidentally get into a 3D view or something like that, you can go back to this workspaces drop-down and switch back to drafting and annotation. That'll get you back to the basic AutoCAD layout uh, for your standard drafting and annotation. That's it for the top set of menus here. And then we move into this lower section uh, that I think is easiest to refer to as a ribbon. It's a tool ribbon. Um, there are different little drawers that you can click on here, home, insert, annotate, et cetera. These will change a little bit depending on what tools are available. For example, if you're hatching something, you'll get a different one that will show up. But for right now, most of what we'll work on is in the home tools. And these are, again, the most common tools that we would need to, to draw with or to work with. Um, my first section of the home tools is the basic drawing tools. We have line, polyline, circle, and arc. We've got smaller tools represent a rectangle, an ellipse, uh, and or hatch. If you want further tools in drawing, you can click the little downward arrow next to draw, and you get more tools. So what AutoCAD tries to do is it presents you with the largest buttons being the most common. So the four most common would be line, polyline, circle, and arc. Then it gives us a few more smaller tools available without clicking the little downward arrow. And then it gives us the less frequently used tools below that. So it's trying to organize it in a way that the most 
useful things are, are presented first. As we move over, we get into the modify section. And this is where we deal with moves and rotates. And we'll talk about trim today, mirrors, etc. Again, if I were to click on modify, there's additional tools that are available below that you can click on as well. We get over into annotation. This has to do with text and dimensions. We're not going to worry about, certainly we're not going to worry about dimensions in this class. It's, it's too advanced of a topic, but it's at least nice to point out that they exist. The next thing is something called layers. And just like in Photoshop or InDesign, um, we have layers available to us in AutoCAD. This helps with general organization of your file. We will talk a lot about layers in this class and how layers are set up in offices and, and that sort of thing so you're prepared when you go to work for a firm at a, as an internship or whatever. Today, we're not going to worry about layers. We're just going to draw on the default layer. We'll get to layers a little bit further on. We have block references. We'll talk a little bit about those. Nothing to worry about quite yet. Then we get to the properties section. Under properties, we can change the color of a line. We can change the line weight, the thickness of the line. And we can also change the line type. Is it a dashed line? Is it a hidden line, et cetera? We will talk about all of those uh, a little bit later in the class. As we move over, we have a few more kind of utility-based things, like a measure tool, et cetera, uh, that are available over here on the end. Then we get into the actual drawing workspace itself. And you can see right here, we have drawing one. It's a tab. It's showing us that we're working currently in drawing one. Zooming in and zooming out is just scrolling in and scrolling out with your scroll wheel. We also can see up here that there's a little kind of a 3D view that's going on. We are only going to work in the top workspace. So there's no reason to really even worry about this. But it's nice to at least see that you're working in the top view for right now. So this is fundamentally set up as an xy coordinate system. It's a grid that, that's established for us. The origin is listed right down here with the x and the y right there. So we'll, st we'll start drawing there in a little bit. But before we get that, I want to continue down toward the bottom of the page. And as we get toward the bottom, you see kind of a floating little bar here that says type a command, which you, may, you, you should be able to see. Some people choose to have it docked at the bottom, so it looks more like this and goes all the way across. Um, Rhino works it or runs it as a bar that goes all the way across. AutoCAD tends to leave it now as this little floating bar. How you work with it doesn't really matter. This is called the command line. And one of the things about AutoCAD or Rhino um, is that they work on a command-based process. We can pick a button. So for example, if I wanted to draw a line and I clicked on line, that would start the line tool. The alternative to that would be for me in the command line to actually type line and then enter, which would start the line command. And on the surface, if you've never worked in AutoCAD before, thinking about memorizing commands and having to type in line and then enter, uh, or actually just L and then enter, starts to be a little daunting. Like, I don't know what all these command names are. And that's why these toolbars are up here and let you pick what tool you want to use. The faster you are in a program like AutoCAD, the more you will use the command line by default. And um, obviously, when I'm demonstrating things, I'm going to go very slowly and, and walk through it. Sometimes I will pick the tool. Sometimes I will type it in. You will also notice that on the handouts that you get, any time that I, I reference typing something in, it's in a different font. It looks like a typewriter in bold on your handout. So you can see that I'm typing that into the command line, whatever it is. So I try to reference the, the commands whenever possible. But certainly using the command line can start to get where the speed can really enhance. And so in a program like Rhino, which is what I use more uh, in demonstration purposes, I will only ever run at about half the speed I can really go. That would be maxing it out because it's just too fast for you guys to keep up with and for you to see what I'm typing in. But the more familiar you are with it, the more you will start to do it. And it'll certainly speed you up as you go along. So whenever you're working, keep an eye. I always say keep one eye on the command line because chances are it will prompt you with what's happening next. And we'll talk about that as we go forward. 
Down at the bottom, we have a couple tabs. We have model and then layout one and layout two. This is model space versus paper space. We will talk in depth in this class about what those are. I think it's one of the things that is always glossed over in AutoCAD classes, yet it's probably one of the most critical things that you learn uh, as, a, as a student as part of AutoCAD. So we're going to definitely cover that in depth, but for right now, you can safely ignore it. On the right side over here, we have a variety of little buttons that turn on certain tools. And some of the tools are available by default. Some of them are not. The one thing that I want to make sure for all of you right now, because it, ha it pertains to what we're doing today, uh, is that I want you to click on this little three lines in the very bottom right corner. And when you click on those three lines, I want you to make sure that dynamic input is checked. Chances are, by default, it is not checked for you. So I want you to make sure that dynamic input is checked. And as long as that has a check to it, we can click off. And then we're going to look at what's available here. So the first little button that's highlighted in blue is the drawing grid. Do you want the drawing grid on or off? Most people prefer to have the drawing grid on, though the more you work in AutoCAD, the more you ignore the grid altogether. It's kind of like in Rhino, you start to ignore the grid altogether. So it's, it's really a matter of preference. It's on by default. As we move over, there's, a, there's an icon with a little plus and then a, a block underneath it. It looks something like this. That is that dynamic input button that I was talking about earlier. We're going to go ahead and turn dynamic input off. So it shouldn't be blue. It should be white. So I'm going to make sure I click on it and it turns white. In about 30 minutes, you're going to turn it back on, and you will probably always leave it on from then on. But it helps in explaining kind of the introduction of AutoCAD and how AutoCAD works to have it turned off. So it's turned off. As we move over, we have something called ortho mode, which only allows us to draw straight lines at 90 degrees, which can be very useful when you're starting to draw floor plans or something like that. For right now, it's off, and that's fine. We also have something, and I'm skipping over a few of these, that looks like a uh, blue square with a green dot in the upper left corner. And I know, I apologize, it's so far down for you guys to see. That is called your object snap, which we will talk about as we go forward. But what that allows you to do is connect to an existing line in a variety of ways. And we'll talk about what those, those are in just a second. This one allows us to show our line weights. We haven't gotten to line weights just yet. Uh, and then I'll gloss over the rest of these, and we'll use those a little bit later on in the class. So now that I've gone over the workspace in general, it's time to actually start drawing something. And what we're going to be drawing today is on the back of your handout. It's a, it's a very simple floor plan. If you take in 136, it's the same floor plan as 136, because Rhino works shockingly the same as AutoCAD. Um, so it, it gets you started. Flip the page back over, and we're going to start with part one, and I'm going to walk you through this uh, as we go forward. And the first thing that we need to do that we haven't talked about just yet, and we haven't dealt with in this class just yet, is that AutoCAD works differently than any other drawing program that we've worked in previously, and that is that AutoCAD has scale, or measurements start to matter. When we work in AutoCAD, we draw everything full size. So we don't ever do any scaling in our head. We don't have to get out one of those little triangular scales and figure out, oh, I'm at quarter scale. That means a foot is one inch. So I'll draw a line at one inch. We don't do that. We just say, oh, I want something that's a foot or 20 feet. We draw it full scale at 20 feet. And we deal with scaling separately after we've already drawn the drawing. So everything is full size. However, we do need to make sure that our drawing is in the correct units. So it may be in decimal units, for example. It may be in meters and centimeters. We have to make sure that it is set up the way that we need it to be set up. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the command line. This is your first command line uh, option here. I'm going to type units. And when I type units, I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And it will bring up the Drawing Units dialog box. And again, this is specified in the, the first part uh, of what we're doing today. And when I get this drawing units dialog box here, I'm going to specify a type. And instead of being in decimal, which is what it's in, I'm going to choose architectural, which is essentially feet and inches. 
I can also change my angle from decimal degrees to be radians, for example, or, or whatever. For our purposes, decimal degrees is probably the easiest to understand, so we're going to leave that at decimal degrees. So we change the type to architectural, and we change the, or we make sure that the angle is set as decimal degrees. And the rest of this is OK by default. Notice that there is also something called precision. And that is, how precise do you really want to be? And if we were talking about a building, on something on a building scale, a sixteenth of an inch is plenty precise. You're not going to get out to the building site and worry about a thirty-second of an inch. It's just too small. So a sixteenth of an inch is just fine. In, in truth, we could do it even less than that. So instead of a sixteenth, we could do it at an eighth or a quarter because we'd round our numbers. However, for our purposes, we're going to leave it at a sixteenth. If we were doing something in industrial design where we're designing, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, the remote control or, or my coffee cup or something like that, a 32nd of an inch might matter at that point. And so you can see that we can change this down to 1 256th of an inch. So it's really, really fine. Technically speaking, AutoCAD can be accurate to 16 dec decimal places if you want it to be. So it's extraordinarily accurate if you want it to be that accurate. For our purposes, 16th of an inch is just fine. So we'll go ahead and leave it at architectural, leave it at a sixteenth of an inch, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Once I've said OK, I now have this set up in its correct units, and I can start to draw my uh, shapes. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with a polyline. So I'm going to pick polyline. Essentially, a polyline allows us to start at one point and continue in a continuous line, picking the next control points. And it will always be straight between the two. So when I click on polyline, or if I type P line, I'm then going to start. And I'm going to try to start drawing right where X and Y intersect. And so I can get with my mouse to where it looks like I'm right on top of X and Y. And if I were to click there, you would think, oh yeah, I started right at 0, 0, and I could keep going. However, if I zoom in on that point, before too long, we see that my starting point here is not at X and Y. So it's not truly accurate to where I wanted it to be. So instead of clicking where I want to start, I'm going to again click on the polyline tool, and I'm going to type in a value. Notice in the command line here it says specify start point. I'm going to type in a coordinate value with x coming first, and then a comma, and then y for that point. And so do you guys remember back, this was probably like Algebra 1 or something like that, where you had to graph little functions, and you had points on the graph, and they were always listed in these little parentheses, x, comma, y, etc. You guys kind of remember that? Count over the number of x, count up the number of y. We're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to start at point 0, comma, 0. So I'm going to type in 0, comma, and then 0, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And when I do that, my line starts right at the point, and no matter how much I zoom in, it will always be right at that point. So let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. There we go. And now I want a line that is 24 feet straight up in the y direction. So my next coordinate is going to be 0, because I'm not going anything in the x, comma, 24, and then I'm going to put the apostrophe in to represent feet. So 0, comma, 24, apostrophe to represent feet. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter, and it will then draw a 24-foot line. Now, unfortunately, based on the template that we've drawn, we can't actually zoom out far enough to see our whole line. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter to finish the command for right now. And then I'll type Z for zoom, and then Enter, followed by E for extents, and then Enter. And now I've zoomed out enough to see my whole 24-foot line. I apologize, it's just the nature of the, the template that we loaded that you can't see everything. So once again, that was Z for zoom, and then E for extents. So I have this line currently drawn right there at 24 feet. If I were to continue with the polyline, I can come back to the polyline tool. I now want to start my line right where that line ended. And so I could type in the value. 0, 24 feet, or I could snap to the end of the line. 
And so you see if I move my mouse over the end of the line, I get that little green square. That means AutoCAD is going to start my line right on top of the corner for the other line. This object snap is turned on down here at the bottom. It's that blue square with the green dot in the corner. If I were to click the little triangle, we can see that endpoint is checked. That's what it's snapping to is the endpoint of the line. So I'll go ahead and continue. I'm going to snap right there to the endpoint of the line. And then I can continue drawing. So the next coordinate that I'm going to type, I want it to go over 12 feet, and it's going to be up 24 feet. So I'll type 12 feet, comma, 24 feet, and then enter. So the coordinates that I've entered so far are called absolute coordinates. They are relative to point zero, zero. And so doing the math and figuring out where these points are, if you start at the origin, is relatively easy. However, if I were drawing, say, somewhere that wasn't the origin, figuring out what the coordinate was for where the end point would be would be rather challenging. So we have something called dynamic input, which we turned off before, or you can call it relative coordinates. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you relative coordinates first, and then we'll turn on dynamic input which is essentially relative coordinates. So I'm going to continue with the polyline tool, and I'll continue from where I left off. And what relative coordinates allow us to do is to specify a coordinate based on the last point that we clicked. So in this case, based on this point that I just clicked, I want to go down by six feet. So I would put the at sign. It's like the email sign, at. That's telling it relative to the last point, I want to go 0, comma, negative 6, apostrophe, for feet. So relative to the last point, I want to go 0 in the x and negative 6 feet in the y. And I'll hit Enter, and I've now drawn that line. So I can continue here, and I can say at, again, relative to that point, I want to go over 12 feet, comma, nothing in the y direction, so 0. So at 12 feet, comma, 0, I can then hit Enter, and that draws the next line there. If I wanted to go straight down, I could once again say at, this time it would be 0, comma, negative 12 feet. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And so then I could switch back into absolute coordinates again if I wanted to. The next point that I need is 12 over and 6 up. So if I said 12 feet, recognize there's no at sign. I'm flipping back. I could say 12 feet, comma, 6 feet, and I'd get that point. So I can flip back and forth between the two, depending on whether I add the at sign or not. So the next one here, if it was absolute coordinates, it would be 12 feet, comma, 0. Enter. There it is. And I can go ahead and snap to the end point or type in 0, comma, 0. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter to finish. And essentially, I've drawn this shape now. So in the old days, AutoCAD 2000, 2004, etc., this distinction between absolute and relative coordinates was really important. If you work in Rhino, the distinction between absolute and relative coordinates is really important. And you get used to typing that little at sign uh, for your relative coordinates. In AutoCAD now, however, we can turn on something called dynamic input. And so I had you turn it all off to start. At this point, we're going to go ahead and turn it back on almost exactly 30 minutes. I said it was going to be 30 minutes with it off. So we're, we're ready to turn it back on. I'm going to click on the dynamic input. It turns blue. And now if I click on the polyline tool, I'm going to start drawing over here. I'm going to draw the same shape, but I want to show you how it works. So I specify a start point. There it is. And notice that as I draw, it shows me a measurement that's highlighted in blue that will let me type in a value for that measurement. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn on ortho. This ortho mode here is the little right angle. That, that way I know for sure I'm drawing straight up and down. And I can just type in a value, 24 feet. Hit Enter, and I now have that. Notice the next measurement here, I can type in 12 feet, Enter. It's a lot easier to work with. So it's important for you to understand what the absolute and relative coordinates are 
so that you could use them if you needed to, but for the most part, you're always going to be working with the dynamic input. And you can obviously see why. It's an improvement. So now I could type in 6 feet, and I could type in 12 feet, and I could type in 12 feet, and I could type in 12 feet, and I could type in 6 feet, and I could come back to where I started and click to end like that. So that was obviously a little bit faster than typing in all the coordinates. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and draw it one more time. I think repetition when we're working in AutoCAD is not a bad thing. I'm going to go ahead and select everything. I'll press the delete key on the keyboard. Everything goes away. I'll come back with my polyline tool. I'm going to start at 0, comma 0. And now I'm going to use the dynamic input and type 24 feet. And I'm going to go over 12 feet. Go down 6 feet. Over 12 feet. I'm going to go down 12 feet. Over 12 feet. Down 6 feet. And then I'm going to go ahead and close my shape back to where I started. So now I have that shape that's drawn nicely for me. It's in one continuous closed polyline. If you drew it and it was several different lines, I'm going to show you that in a second, such that you could select individual pieces, you'll want to select all of it and then join it together. I'd like to point out something about selections in AutoCAD. There are two different ways of selecting objects. If you drag a box from the left side to the right side, and actually instead of dragging the box, click, anything that is contained completely within the, the box is selected. So in this case, just those upper lines are selected. This line and this line were not completely contained within the box, therefore they weren't selected. If, however, we drag a selection box from the right side, notice it's green instead of blue, anything that I touch with the box will be selected. So in the same box, I get these two lines that I went through, even though they're not completely contained. So the differences in the two selections, once again, from the left to the right, it selects just what's completely contained. From the right to the left, it's whatever the box touches that will get selected. And both of those methods can be very useful down the road. So I want to make sure that everything is selected. And then I'll go ahead and type join to make sure that it is one closed polyline. If you drew it as a closed polyline, if you drew it in one continuous operation, it's already closed. You don't have to join it. But before we start on the next piece of the puzzle, we want to make sure that it is a nice joined polyline. So now I need to add some thickness to these walls. I have one line that represents the outside of the walls. I need to draw the inside of the walls. So I'm going to use a tool called offset. And I can, of course, type in offset into my command line. But I can also choose it up here um, in the modify section. It's the lowest right. It looks like a little white line cloud with a blue line around it. If I were to click on this offset, it's going to say offset. Specify offset distance or through erase layer. The through erase and layer are options. We don't need any of those options. We just want to specify the offset distance. So I'm going to go ahead and type 6 inches and then enter on my keyboard. Then it says, select an object to offset. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my uh, wall here. And when I click on it, it's going to ask me, specify a point on the side to offset. So I can either be on the inside or I can be on the outside. I want to be on the inside, so I'm going to click somewhere inside of my building. And when I do that, it's going to create a second line for me that is exactly six inches away from the first line. So I'll do that once again. So I'll click on offset, specify offset distance, 6 inches. I'll type in 6 inches. Then it says select object to offset. I'll select my outer wall. Then it says specify point on the side to offset. So do I want it to be on the outside 
on the inside. I want it to be on the inside. There it is. When I'm done, I'll hit enter to finish the command. Generally speaking, you need to hit enter when you're done to, co to commit to the command and to be done with it. The other thing is if you find yourself lost at some point or something's not working, hit escape a few times. Escape will back you out of any current command. And it's one of those things that will save you because you'll be pulling your hair out, I can't do what I want to do. Hit escape a few times and you'll be able to do it. Okay, so I now have the basis of this drawing here and I need to start adding things like windows, for example, and or doors. So let's go ahead and let's look at this upper wall right here. I want to cut a door through the center of that upper wall and you can see it on the back of your page here. I want to cut a door through the center of that wall. I'm going to go ahead and I want to draw a line right at the middle of these points. If I click on the line tool and I move my mouse to approximately the middle, you can see that I get a little triangle that shows up. If you don't get that triangle, it's listed underneath your object snaps under midpoint snap. That should have a check mark next to it. Now when I move over the middle, I get that little triangle. I can then click and then I can click again here and I get a line that goes from the middle of this line to the middle of that line. There it is. Now I'm going to go back to the offset tool and I'm going to offset this line to one side and to the other side based on half of my door. So I have my door listed here at three feet. So half of that would be 18 inches or one foot six. And I will go ahead and when I say specify offset distance, I'll type 18 followed by the quotation mark for inches. Enter. And I can offset right there. I need to do it to the other side as well. I could continue, just click on it. But I want to show you something else. When I type offset or if I initiate offset again and I specify my offset distance, Instead of typing 18 inches, if you don't want to do the conversion, you can also type one foot six quotation for inches. And if you type one foot six inches, you'll get the same value. So AutoCAD can do the math. You can type in inches, you can type in feet in inches, you can type in feet, and it will always convert for you. So now I need to do the opposite side. We'll go from there to there. So now I have this side of the door, and I have that side of the door, the overall here, is three feet. So then I have some pieces that need to, to go away. Let me hit enter to finish the command. And I need this line between the doors to go away. I need to cut that out. And we're going to use something called a trim to do that. If you look in their modify tools, there's something called trim. Click on that. And with trim selected, it's going to say select objects or select all. I'm going to go ahead and select my objects. I don't want to select from the left to the right because then I'm only getting these objects. I want to select from the right to the left, which gets me all of these objects. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And then it's going to ask me what objects to trim. And one of the great things that AutoCAD does is when you hover over an object, it gives you a little cursor with a red X and it grays out the line. So it's really easy to see what it is that you're getting rid of. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this, and I'll get rid of this, I'll get rid of this, and I'll get rid of this. Now logic would say, oh, I, I want to get rid of this middle one too. But because it's not being trimmed by anything else, it's a whole object, you can't trim it. So we have to actually delete it. So I'll go ahead and hit enter to finish the trim command. And then I need to select this object in the middle, and I can use the delete key on the keyboard to delete that object. So now I have a doorway that's been cut into this wall. If I want to draw a window, I can go to my line tool again, and I need to draw the window somewhere in here. Now I have the window at one foot six from this corner. And what a lot of people do is they go in and they click on the corner, and they go over by 18 inches or one foot six, and then they draw a line down like that. The problem there is you end up with an extra scrap of a line that's showing up. 
And you can get rid of it if you remember it's there and just delete it, which is fine. But you want to make sure that you don't have those lines there all the time. So what you can do instead is I can, turn, I can click on line again. I can hover over this point. I haven't clicked it all. And then I can move my mouse to the right. And you see how I get that little green dotted line that shows up as I move to the right? I can then type in a value, say 18 inches, and then enter. And it will start my line 18 inches over from where I kind of hovered. So I'll do that again. So hopefully you can see it a little bit better. I wish the colors made it easier for you to see. The green is just hard on the projector to see. So once again, I'll do it. I'll click on line. Without clicking, I'll hover over a corner. So there it is. I've covered. I've hovered. I get the little green square. Then I, without clicking, I move my mouse over here. This time I'm going to the left. I get a little dashed line, and I can specify a value. So in this case, it was one foot. And I'll hit Enter. And it now starts my line one foot away from that corner right there. You see that my, my snap is set to perpendicular. It's got a little perpendicular icon on it. If your perpendicular isn't set, you'll want to set it. If you go down to the object snap here, you want to make sure that you have perpendicular checked right there. That way you can snap at 90 degrees to that line. So I'll do that one more time on the opposite side. I would start right there on the corner, move my mouse over again without clicking by 18 inches. Oops, didn't like me. Let's try that one more time. There it is. And I'll snap perpendicular down to there. And I'll hit Enter. Now, as with AutoCAD, Rhino, a variety of these, these kinds of drawing applications, there's always more than one way to do whatever it is that I'm doing. So just because I did it this way doesn't mean you have to do it exactly this way either. But for example, I have this line already. I could use offset. My offset distance is the width of the window, which is two feet. I could type in two apostrophe, enter. And then I could offset this line from there to there. There's nothing wrong with that. There's lots of ways of doing this sort of thing. The other thing that I'll want to do is I'll want to identify that these are, in fact, windows. So I'm going to draw a line that goes straight across there to there. And I will draw a line again that goes straight across from there to there to represent those as windows. Doesn't look like I actually drew that on the sheet that you handed out. I think I did draw it, but my guess is that the copy machine missed a lot of the thinner lines that are on this handout. Uh, if you go, if you're worried about it, you can always go to today's exercise. And it should be listed. There's the drawing. There you go. Yeah, you can see it here. There's a little line that represents the window itself. Well, you guys can't see it on the projector. But it is there, I promise, if you look at it. OK, so I'm going to continue on. And I want to draw one of the windows over here at the bottom, which happens to be in the same place as this window. So I could come over here and just draw it. But my other option would be to select this window. From left to right selects just what's contained. So it's just the window. And I can use the mirror tool. So there's mirror. And what mirror does is it says specify a first point of the mirror line, which means that I need to specify a line across which this is going to be mirrored. So in this case, I want to specify the midpoint of this wall. There it is. And if I go straight out, you can see that I'm getting down there at the bottom right here, I get the other window. So I'll go ahead and click. Now I get a window and a window down there. There is one more piece of this, and that is do I want to erase the original, yes or no? Sometimes you want to get rid of the one that you mirrored. In this case, I want to keep them both, so I'll make sure it says no. I can click on no or type N for no, and I'll get that line. So there's that window. So it's pretty easy to just mirror that from there to there. The next one, this window would be six inches over here. It's a two foot window. I can select this window, and I can use up here under transform, I can use copy. 
to make a copy of this window. So in this case, it says copy. Specify base point, which means where do I want to copy from? So I'd like to copy, ideally, from six inches away from this line right there. So I will put my mouse over this point. I'll move over by six inches. And then I can drop it right there. I'll hit Enter to finish. And now I end up with those two windows. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique to do that. I could instead just copy it. And I could move it over here somewhere that's kind of a guess. And then I need to specify where it is. And I could either move this. I could draw a line there that was six inches. And I could move this from there to there. And now it's six inches apart. To me, the copy with my uh, base point being six inches away is far more efficient. And the more comfortable you get in AutoCAD, the easier that will be to do. So now, there's a variety of other windows. You're going to draw those as part of this, this drawing. But one of the windows is on the side here. And the window that's on the side is the same distance from the corner as this window right there. So I could come in, and I could go from there. We could go up by 18 inches. Oops, sorry. Try that one more time. Inches, I could draw it, and I could draw the window. But the alternative to that is to use mirror. And this is, again, one of those things where it's kind of a, a trick. To use mirror, I could select this, go to mirror, and instead of mirroring traditionally, I can mirror across the 45 degrees of this corner. So if I mirrored from here to there, I can create that object across a 45 degree line. And so do I want to erase the source objects? No. I now have that window as well. This window could then mirror to the one that's in the upper corner here, across the center, like that. So I'll let you draw the rest of these. The last piece of the puzzle would be to draw the door itself. To do that, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. And here's a point in practice where actually having some coordinates wouldn't be a bad thing. So I know that the door um, is an inch and 3 quarters thick, and it's 3 feet long. So I would go at 1.75 inches, comma, 3 feet, and then Enter. Oops, it should have been negative 3 feet. And I create the door. Let me do that one more time. Rectangle from right there, and it should be at and 1.75 inches, comma, negative 3, apostrophe, enter. And there's the door as a rectangle. So the last piece would be the swing of the door, which is an arc. There's a variety of arc tools that are available to you. The easiest one to do door swings. If I click on the little downward arrow next to arc, I get multiple options here, is going to be a start, end, and direction curve. So we'll go start, end, direction, which is going to ask me, specify start point there, specify end point there, and then direction. It's either going to go in or go out. There it is going out, and I have my door curve. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to work and create as much of this as you can. If you're really comfortable in AutoCAD and you've worked in AutoCAD before, this may be super quick. You might be done in 5, 10 minutes. If you've never worked in AutoCAD before, this could take you the rest of today to work on. Because this class has no prerequisite, we all have to start somewhere. And so for those of you that have done AutoCAD before, this is a little bit easier. I will bring those of you that have never touched AutoCAD up to speed with the people that have worked in it before, and we'll continue moving forward. I can promise you, I think, I think I can make this promise, that even if you're very proficient in AutoCAD, I can still teach you a few things. So um, just bear with me. If you've worked in AutoCAD before, go through the exercises. Make sure you get this done um, and, and get the little bit of practice. Make sure you understand the tools that I've talked about. Um, and then use your time to catch up on other things. We're, we're about halfway through the semester. Actually, we're a little past halfway through the semester. 
So I can promise you that you have something else to be working on too for some other class. So use your time, okay, because we're here. Okay, so if there's no other questions, I'll get you guys started, and then we'll pick up AutoCAD next class as well. Obviously, next week is spring break, so we split AutoCAD across spring break, but it is what it is. Uh, hopefully you guys won't forget everything we talked about.